the rest of the story. Did you ever hear the one about the two fellows? They were business partners back before the turn of the century who were trying to decide just what was the wave of the future. And their conjecture was so significant at that time that parts of the discussion they had were remembered and recorded verbatim. First, consider their business ventures theretofore. Publishing had been their first. They had built their own printing press, using a second-hand tombstone for the flatbed. They had begun by printing advertisements and handbills, things like that. Eventually, they published a weekly newspaper called the West Side News. In the first issue appeared March 1 of 1889, describing itself as, quote, a paper to be published in the interests of the people and business institutions. Whatever tends to their advancement, moral, mental, and financial will receive the closest attention, end quote. A year later, the weekly became a daily called the Evening Item. And the publication succeeded for some years, but somehow, to these two business partners, publishing just did not seem to be the way of the future. They agreed it would always have its place, but the journalism would not grow with the vigor of other enterprises. So the partners went into manufacturing, the production and sales of equipment with brilliant prospects for years to come. Dual function calculators, for example, machines that could both add and multiply, and streamlined typewriters. There would be a dramatically increasing demand for those, and then one day one of the partners approached the other and said, I've got it, I've got it. He had just realized that the true wave of the future was the automobile. Do you remember Cordy Roos, he said? The year previous, their friend and neighbor Cordy Roos had built the town's first horseless carriage. Everybody had laughed at Cordy. Even they, the two businessmen, had laughed at him. One had suggested Cordy fasten a bed sheet to the underside of his contraption to catch all of the machine parts that kept falling off. And everybody laughed again. But these two partners had been short-sighted, insisted the one, just because the horseless carriage was then a sluggish, undependable pile of nuts and bolts, that was no reason to write it off. For surely someday the automobile would replace the horse as man's primary means of transportation. And just maybe these businessmen could be in the vanguard of that socio-industrial revolution. Well, the partners deliberated, they hashed out the pros and cons, and finally one of them declared, and his words, word for word, are recalled, quote, to try to build one, that is a motorized road vehicle, to try to build one of any account would be tackling the impossible. It would be easier, he insisted, to build a flying machine. And that is where it began. A practical, forward-looking business enterprise, which was indeed to herald a new era. Purposely, I have neglected to mention that among the prior business ventures of these two young businessmen was the manufacture and sales of bicycles. That's right. It was Wilbur who told Orville that it would be easier to build a flying machine than a practical, reliable automobile. And thus did aviation become the last and greatest preoccupation of two Dayton, Ohio business partners whom you know as the Wright Brothers. Only now you know the rest of the story.